Hey guys, this is Dave with Audio In, and this is the Oravetti Dynabird. Of course, this is a budget set, and it wasn't too long ago that I reviewed the OD100 and the OD200, which both of those were just okay for me, and I didn't really feel like they could compete in terms of what my preferences are with some of the other top sets within their price range. So now we have Oravetti's Dynabird. So as usual, we'll cover what's included in the box. We'll quickly go over the specifications and design, and then we'll talk about the sound. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. So on my desk is everything that's included in the box. We have the IMs and cable. It also comes with a pretty decent case and a nice assortment of ear tips. The Dynabird uses a single beryllium coated dynamic driver and it's housed in a very nicely machined metal housing. And you can see its main structure has more of a bullet style design, but with a little bit of an extra added piece on the rear. And it has an angle cut to it, which is actually pretty nice because it does seem to rest nicely in my ears. As a matter of fact, the fit and comfort overall is very good and that was even using the included ear tips although in the end I did end up switching over to the Divinus velvet tips for most of my testing and I do that a lot I do like the the Divinus tips they work well with a lot of different IEMs so fit and comfort are good the build is also good for the price and again with the all-metal build it just feels nice and robust and it should hold up fine with normal daily use. The design is also decent. It is a little plain, but at the same time, I can definitely appreciate the minimalist approach they took. I do really like the gunmetal gray color. I also think it looks nice with the cable. Speaking of the cable, it has a 3.5 millimeter termination and two pin connectors at the earpiece. I think it's very nice for the price. It's pretty soft and I haven't really experienced too many issues with it tangling. So it looks nice and it seems to be pretty durable as well. And it's all also manageable, which is about all you can expect at this price point. Okay, let's move on to the sound. So the sound signature of the Dynabird is a V-shape. So there is an emphasis on the bass and treble and then a little bit of a recession in the lower mids, but the upper mids are actually quite forward. As a matter of fact, they're a little more forward than I typically prefer. And while there are some things about the Dynabird I do like, there are also a few things I wish they would have done a little differently. So let's break the sound down a little more and then we'll talk about that. We'll start with the bass. Now, as far as bass quantity, for this having a V-shaped tuning, I do think they've struck a pretty decent balance between keeping things fun, but also keeping it from overpowering the rest of its tuning. So again, for this tuning approach, this isn't bad. That being said, I don't know if it's really enough to completely offset the upper mids and treble perfectly, but it is close. And we'll talk more about that when we move into the upper mids. Dynamics and slam are also pretty good. And I think what might be helping also is that the extension it provides is good. So you've got a nice amount of sub bass rumble 
and that of course helps to kind of support the rest of the bass frequencies. Now where we do start to run into some small issues are with the transition out of the bass into the low mids because there is some bass bleed which does affect the low mid detail. And I've said this before, this is a pretty common issue at this price point, but it's not that bad, certainly not so bad as to cause any real concern. Now, of course, that extra mid bass energy also does bring a nice amount of warmth and it gives instruments a little extra note weight as well. And then moving into the mids and upper mids, I am picking up on some unnaturalness, which is also another common issue for V-shaped tuned IMs. And I actually did pick up on that unnaturalness in isolation even before I started in with comparisons, but I noticed it even more when I was doing my comparisons with the, the Delcy and with the Aria 2, both of which just sounded a little more natural in my opinion. And then I also have the new TRI i3 Mark III, and of course I don't want to say too much because I have not reviewed it yet, but it has something pretty special going on too as far as its timbre and its overall naturalness. And that is something that's pretty important to me. So because of the way they approach the tuning of the mid-range with a Dynabird, it does veer away from my tuning preference somewhat and then because of the extra energy in the upper mids it can also come across as a little shouty as well now I will say that it does have good upper mid-range clarity and it does do female vocals nicely it also does male vocals okay but again there is something about it that it's making it render some of the instruments and vocals just a little bit unnaturally in general. Now, as far as the treble, it is a little different. And like the mids, it does stray pretty far off from my tuning preference. And it's not just because it's V-shaped, because I do have V-shaped IEMs that I like a lot and that have a lot of treble energy, but this one can come across as a little sibilant, especially at higher volumes. And it could also sound generally unnatural if I'm being completely honest. Now it does have some upper treble past 10K, which is nice because that does bring that sense of airiness. It also has a little bit of shimmer, but beyond that, it also adds some perceived detail as well. And I will get into that a little more in depth as far as the technical performance in a minute. So those are all good things for sure. But in a nutshell, while the treble isn't maybe as refined as I would like, it does have that upper treble presence that brings some detail, air, and shimmer back into the picture. And generally, I do think it's acceptable as far as the treble quality for this price point. But I think where the Dynabird really shines is in its technical performance because it rivals some of the best dynamic driver IEMs under $100 like the Delcy, the Aria 2, the Galileo, but probably not to the levels of the F1 Pro or Clanar, but it does come close, not only in terms of detail levels, but imaging and separation as well. So detail levels are good. Soundstage, while not not necessarily wide is about average, definitely not what I would consider intimate. Imaging is also pretty solid, so the positional cues for instruments and vocals are fairly accurate and they have pretty decent focus as well. Now, as far as where I would say the Dynabird lands in terms of the competition, as far as its technical performance, as I had stated a moment ago, I would put it right up there with the Delcy, the Galileo, Aria 2, and the LM500, but it does fall just short of two of the most technical IEMs I've heard under $100, the F1 Pro and Clanar. But in terms of tuning, and of course, this is based on my personal tuning preferences. For me, the upper mids and treble are a little too forward and they don't strike me as sounding very natural, which again is common with a V-shape IEM. And at this price point, I have to frequently remind myself that the manufacturer's objective is most likely to deliver an engaging, dynamic and fun listening experience as opposed to a neutral or natural or more laid back listening experience, which is again, more in line with my preference. So if your preference is similar to mine, then this may not be a good fit for you. But if you are looking for a fun, an engaging set with, again, with good technical performance, then this might be a great fit for you. Are there better V-shaped tuned IMs under $100? Yes, and one that comes to mind 
is the EA500, but with the brass nozzle because it's a little more balanced. It still has somewhat of a fun and engaging presentation. It has very good technical chops, again, for being under $100. And while it does actually have some of the same issues in the upper mids as far as it being a little mid forward with the potential of becoming fatiguing, it still sounds a little more natural. And the bottom line is it can match the Dynabird or in some cases even best the Dynabird in almost every other category. And the EA500 also has two different tuning filters. But again, what it boils down to is your personal tuning preference. All that said, when you take the entire package, the entire Dynabird package into consideration, so tuning, technical performance, design, build, the accessories, I do think Oravetti put together a pretty solid package. And while I don't know if I can give it an outright full recommendation, as long as you know what you're going to get or know what to expect, and hopefully I explained it okay, which is again, a more engaging and fun listing experience with great technical performance, then maybe this set will work for you. So that concludes my review of the Oravetti Dynabird. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. If you like my content, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. Also, if you would please like this video, please share this video. I hope you guys have an awesome day.